It's time for Lumberjacks! Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, only professional grade with five-year warranty. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Yamaha, rev your heart. We're here in the lobster capital of Canada, Barrington, Nova Scotia, for the third annual Nova Scotia Lumberjack Championships, where over 40 competitors are vying for just about $20,000 in prize money. Hi, I'm Rod Cumberland, and today we're going to be covering the women's underhand chop, the hot saw event, and the relay race. Relay race, we have four teams from Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PEI. They're going to be racing in 10 events simultaneously to see who can take home the gold. Don't go anywhere, because there's lots of action coming up on Lumberjacks. Well, this being the third annual Nova Scotia Lumberjack Championships, in the first two years they held it in Truro, Nova Scotia, which is the central part of Nova Scotia. This year they've moved down the coast, the southwest corner of Nova Scotia, the municipality of Barrington, which is the lobster capital of Canada. And I'm joined this week by our co-host and Lumberjack Sport Analyst, Dave Johns. Dave, I know you're an avid fisherman. Have you got much experience lobster fishing? No, Bill, I don't. Unlike one of the guys here running the show this weekend, Berlin Nickerson's actually professional lobster fisherman. I know lobster fishing is one of the staples of this community out here in Barrington. You see all the boats, all of our crews had a chance to get out on them this week and experience Barrington in all of its glory. But folks, everybody here this weekend is getting to experience lumberjack sports in all of its glory. And you mentioned that Berlin was one of the three organizers, Ryan McIntyre and Darren Hudson, the other couple of guys that really put a lot of work into this competition. And there's the North Nova Lumberjack Society sign. They're kind of representatives of the people that are putting together the Nova Scotia Lumberjack Championships. We got one third of the competition still yet to go. Nate Cumberland and Marcel Dupuis are battling it out for first place with older brother Ben Cumberland hot in their heels. We're gonna be getting started with the underhand chop. In total, we're gonna be showing you the top two heats of the underhand chop. And this is Caitlin Carroll taking on Melanie Bork. Yeah, this is going to be an action-packed power heat here in the women's underhand chop. Both these ladies, many accolades to their names in this event. Looks like these ladies are set, ready to go. This is going to be probably a two and two opening in here. And wow, these blocks are soft, Bill. And these women are chopping through 10 inches round a trembling aspen, the wood species of choice in most Canadian events. It's a softer wood, not quite as soft as white pine, but trembling aspen with a good piece of wood can be moved quite quickly. Absolutely. Look at these ladies already almost to the center of the block on the front side. Hopefully staying away from those footholds. You see the nails in the front of those blocks? The ladies are trying to avoid those slab nails as well, Bill. And a couple of nasty looking knots are for Melanie Bork on her front side. Caitlin Carroll probably three or four swings of the ax ahead of her. It's going to be tough to catch Caitlin in this heat. Yeah, Caitlin, past champion, taken down. Melanie Bork, it looks like right now, she's already getting into the small one of the backside of the block, going for the drivers now. One and one, the bottom out. Make sure to get those pesky wood chips out of there. But here comes the drives, one to the top, one to the bottom. That'll do it for Caitlin Carroll. Nice job there for Caitlin, set the time to beat a 51.99. Okay, so Caitlin, I think that's a little bit bigger wood than you chopped yesterday and also than you normally chop. So what do you do differently with bigger wood? Uh, it is a little bit bigger, it was 11 inches today, but truthfully you still just kind of go through your same thing, make sure that you're trying to hit and hang both your top and bottom. Had a couple of miss hits, but I think it went alright. Well, Caitlin set the time to beat at just under 52 seconds. This next heat will be our last heat in the women's underhand shop. Tess Billings taken on Jesse Swinemer. Now Tess Billings is a recent graduate of the University of New Brunswick. I've seen her win countless trophies in the underhand shop in that area, and she should be the favorite in this heat. Yeah, Jesse Swinemer, though, no slouch in this. I know she's competed on the professional series as well for a couple of years, graduate from Dalhousie, and she has got a big axe in this event, and she's got one to grind here in this underhand chop. Now, you can see the selection of Tess's wood here. She's got her chop way over to the left-hand side, probably to her right, to our left there. Is that because maybe she didn't want to chop the other part of the block? 
Yeah, I think it was because she might have seen a knot whirl on the one side. Aspen is known for hidden knots, and if you can see a tiny swirl, it could give you an advantage over your competitors who may have missed it in this event. Tess Billings makes her turn over to the backside just ahead of Jesse Swinemer. Both competitors are working the box pattern. Two at the top, two at the bottom. Reaching down low is the key to get that bottom wood out. Yeah, that is a big key. You can't see that bottom wood as well as you can see the top. So you gotta trust your ax and be able to get the toe of the ax wrapped around to be able to really slice your way through it. Looks like Tess and Jesse both getting into the center of this log right now. Both gonna be going for the drivers. Big sticks there though for Jesse Swinemer. It's going to be close here, Bill. Who's it going to be at the end? Nice, clean lines by both competitors. Looks like Jess Swinemer has worded herself a little bit. She's got no more wood to chop. A big miss hit there. Tess Billings has chosen to take out a couple more chips before driving. And Jess Swinemer, Tess Billings, photo finish. We're going to have to go to the stopwatches for this one, Dave. So Tess, typically, uh, I know the ladies chop around 10-inch uh, wood. This is 11-inch. You doing anything different when you chop 11-inch wood? Yeah, I mean, I have really good cardiovascular fitness, so I do a lot of running, and I think that really helped me out here today. Was you happy with that chop? Felt pretty good. Well, a solid field of competitors here at the Nova Scotia Lumberjack Championships in the women's division, but it was Caitlin Carroll, the class of the field, by 15 seconds over Tess Billings. Municipality of Barrington, we uh, boast that we're the loft of capital of Canada here. It's a, it's a huge industry. It's a, a $500 million industry here. Since the fall of the ground fishery, it's, it's our livelihood. So um, we take care of it and, and look after it for uh, generations to come. So uh, it, it, is, it isn't only lobsters. There is lumberjacks and uh, forestry in, in the municipality here too. The Nova Scotia Lumberjack Championships here in the municipality of Barrington is going to be a huge economic boost. Um, we look forward to it. We look forward to building on it in the future and, and, and growing it with our, our, our local competitors and competitors that come from Quebec, Ontario, and the east coast of the U.S. And much thanks to Eddie Nickerson, the warden of the municipality of Barrington here in the south shore of Nova Scotia, the lobster capital of Canada. We are now heading into the standing block shop and we have all the best choppers in the Maritimes here. They're gonna be chopping through 12 inches of trembling aspen. Actually, Dave, they're calling it Octopoplar? Yeah, new genus and species named by Berlin Nickerson. He cultivated these logs up with his Echo 600 chainsaw, making them all even for all the competition here and right into the standing block chop now. And here's Berlin Nickerson, the guy who prepared the wood. He's one of the organizers of the competition, taking on Marcel Dupuis, a former Canadian champion. A couple of hard hitters here, one from New Brunswick and one from right here, Barrington, Nova Scotia. Yeah, those were some monstrous hits there by Marcel Dupuy. He's already around the other side, and here comes Berlin Nickerson. The wood is coming apart quite nicely here. The octopoplar is falling apart. The guys are hitting their marks. They're both putting some drivers in. It's going to be really close, and Marcel Dupuy wins the first heat with a 20.86. So, Marcel, tell me what you chopped. That chop went well. Uh, I had a little pattern in my head I wanted to do, and it kind of worked. A few extra hits, a few scoops, but uh, overall, a good chop for me. When you see the slab, when it sl slabs like that, what goes through your head? Oh, you know you have a good block. You got it, then you got to go. So. Right on. Good job. Good job. Thank you very much. Well, Marcel referenced the scoop that he had there. I did not notice it on the camera angle that we had, but a scoop is a very dangerous swing of the axe. It basically glances, and uh, you got to hold on to your axe. Sometimes it tends to fly through the air. This next heat, Nick Graham taking on Mario Bork. Time to beat 20.86. Yeah, both these competitors here have a shot at taking down that time from Marcel, especially after he said he scooped on that one. If Nick Graham here can piece one together, but no, he's got kind of a stair step to heaven on the front of that block. He's gonna have to make up for it here on the back. Both guys make their turn over to the backside. There's a hanging chip that Mario just blows out of the way. He's trying to drive things off, although he misses a hit there, a costly hit. Nick Graham trying to drive off. Both guys driving off at the exact same time. Another chip for Nick Graham and Mario Bork wins the heat. So Mario, tell me what you chop, how it went. Uh, it didn't go too bad. I was planning to put 10 in the front, 10 and 10. I had to put a couple extra hit in the back. Uh, I don't know, I had grease something on my hands, though. I felt my hand, my axe was uh, slipping my hand, so I wasn't 100% confident, but it still went all right, just cut it safe. Yeah, safe cut, because uh, when you drove it off, it just bingo, bango, bongo, the three drivers. 
Yeah, I just put three across to be safe, and I didn't. I took an extra round of chips on the back just to be safe. I didn't want to be driving forever, so uh, just safe cut and hopefully get me in there somewhere. Well, a good job there by Mario, but a couple more accurate hits if easily could have taken out five or six seconds off his time and bested the time of Marcel Dupuy of 20.86. As a result, Marcel is still in the lead, heading into the last heat. We got Nathan Cumberland taking on his older brother, Ben Cumberland, in the final heat of the standing block chop. Two elite standing block cutters here in this heat. It's going to be anybody's race. I think the advantage lately has been to Nathan Cumberland, the Canadian champion, and here they go into the front of the block. Look at those chips fly. Nathan Cumberland hitting with a whole lot of power. Ben Cumberland hitting with a whole lot of speed. Both guys flipping over to the back sides exact same time. It's going to be a race to the finish. Yeah, there might be seismic activity with those drives from Nathan Cumberland. 17.4 seconds, wow. Say, tell me what you chopped. Um, it went okay. Uh, the wood was a little bit firmer than it was yesterday. I thought that block would be a lot nicer, but uh, a couple of scoop hits, but other than that, very blessed. Tell me about the move and stand and how that messes up uh, your chopping at all. Um, I didn't notice it so much here, but usually if you have a stand that's moving a lot, when that stand is wobbling, when you hit, you're, it's losing a lot of power out of your swing, and it's harder to hit it when it's moving, so. Well, Bill, it has been the Nathan Cumberland and Marcel Dupuis show all weekend long. Both those guys finishing one and two in the standing block. And we're back here in Barrington, Nova Scotia for the third annual Lumberjack Championships here in Nova Scotia. And we are heading into the women's bow saw, the last event for the women. And they're going to be sawing through 10 inches round of Trembling Aspen, also known as Poplar. And we're going to be showing you the top three heats. The first heat of the women's bow saw is going to be Alisa Schroeder taking on Tess Billings. Yeah, both these ladies, very proficient sawyers, got their starts in college. And then college, they usually have to do a super sweet event, which is three or four cuts. But this is only a one cut event here today. That's right, Dave. It's a one-cut event, and it is a sprint to the finish. Could be anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds. These girls have got to get their saw blades set in the wood, find out how much weight they can put on the saw blades, and go from there. Absolutely. And all of it comes from the tension of that bow itself, Bill. If they don't have enough tension on those blades, they'll get a really squirrely start into the log, and that could spell disaster and potentially a cutout and a disqualification. A little bit of trouble there for Allison Schroeder at the beginning. Tess Billings is well on her way to getting halfway through the cut. They're keeping them nice and strong and level using both ends of the blade, going handle to handle. Tess Billings is going to win this heat as she gets down to the bottom of the cut. Tess Billings with a little bit of a struggle at the end there takes the first heat with a 17.6. So Tess uh, wasn't an overly smooth cut. Can you explain what went on there? Looks like there's a little hard spot in the center of my block there, but I just got this saw here a couple days ago, so I'm pretty happy with it. Right on. Probably didn't affect the teeth much, you don't think? I don't think so. I think a bow saw is a little uh, hardier than a single buck saw, so I think I'll be all right. Good. Check it over, though. Great job. Thank you very much. Well, looking at that replay, Tess Billings certainly could have shaved a few seconds off her time if she had gone straight down through the wood. She was on quite an angle there and costing her a lot of time. This next heat, the second heat, Kelly Bonus from Prince Edward Island taking on Cameron Finley. Yeah, this is a power heat in the women's bow saw right now. I know Kelly Bonus, one of her favorite events. Both these ladies got amazing blades, and here we go. They're off to the races. Both cuts nice and smooth. Kelly Bonus on the left-hand side, an excellent bow sawyer, learning her skill at Dalhousie Agricultural Campus. Cameron Finley, also from the Truro Campus. And Kelly Bonus wins the heat with a time of 12.43, and she's the leader in this event. Kelly, I noticed something just before the event started. You made a, a mad dash to the back of the stage. Tell us what was going on and why. Oh, I come up to the stand there and I had a knot in my log to saw. And I just got a brand new bow saw blade from Donald Lambert. So I was kind of hesitant to run it through the saw or the, the wood. So I went back up my second one. Come back, they trimmed it and the knot pretty much left. So I went back and changed it again and ran my good saw. Okay, well, heat number three is the last heat in the women's bow saw division. 12.43 is the time to beat. It's the third time now we've seen Melanie Bork and Caitlin Carroll go at it. Right now it's 2-0. Caitlin, Melanie is looking for a little bit of payback. Yeah, her mouth has got to be watering looking at this 10-inch Aspen log. Bosaw is one of her favorite events here. She's looking to take down Caitlin Carroll in this one. 12.43 is a time set by Kelly Bonus. Melanie and Caitlin for the third time here at the Nova Scotia Lumberjack Championships. Melanie is going and she is rocking this thing. Melanie Burke's going to win this heat. 
Only good enough for second place. Melanie Bork comes in with a 12.56. So, Mel, CrossFit is a rage right now, and I know that you're into it hard. Um, tell us how it helps you compete in lumberjack sports. It has increased my fitness, like, incredibly. Like, we took the last year off competing, and I came back this year. I haven't trained, but I've been beating a lot of my previous best times and stuff, despite not training, so. And you just did a box on. You're standing here hardly even breathing hard. I feel like I'm breathing pretty hard, but anyways, yes. Good cut. Thank you. Well, the women's bow saw is now a fait accompli. Kelly Bonus from Prince Edward Island wins it with a 12.43, just edging out Melanie Bork. Well, we're about to put a bow on the third annual Nova Scotia Lumberjack Championships here in Barrington, Nova Scotia. And many thanks to the organizers, Darren Hudson, who is also the owner and producer of Wild Axe Productions here in Barrington, and the timber lounge operator in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Ryan McIntyre, and Berlin Nickerson. Also, many thanks for putting the show on. We are heading into the hot side. We're going to be showing you the top four heats. The first heat, Ryan McIntyre, one of the show organizers, taking on veteran competitor from the Maritime Lumberjack Association, Scott Reed. Yes, Scott Reed out of Truro, Nova Scotia. He's got to be one of the favorites in the hot saw. An absolute savage with a hot saw in his hand. Here we go, Bill. The rules in the hot saw, one down, one up, one down, three cuts, all within six inches. And keep in mind, the chains and the bars themselves take up a half inch. Yeah, here we go down to the bottom. Oh, trouble for McIntyre on two. He already cut out of the bottom there. Looks like Scott Scotty Reed had troubles as well on stand one, Bill. Scott Reed is going to take a DQ in this by cutting over the line. Ryan McIntyre wins the heat with a 14.57. Yes, Ryan, I was watching your cut, and I see there was a, some hesitation at the start. Tell me what was going on right there. Yeah, I, uh, I cut out on that first cut down, and I wasn't 100% sure. I thought it was going to cut out, and then I, I saw the disc hit the deck, so I said, oh, geez, better put another one in. And uh, yeah, got through it, got four, or I guess four cuts, but uh, three on the deck, so happy. Well, Ryan McIntyre was extremely lucky to get inside that line at the six inch mark. I guess there was some black all the way around the log. He comes in with a time of 14.57 as we head into the next heat. It's gonna be Doug Armsworthy taking on Garnet Peters. Yeah, both these guys, young guns in the sport, up and comers, new to the hot saw realm. We're gonna see if they can handle the power of these saws here. Here we go. Look at the machine on the left hand side by Garner Peters. Doug Armsby on the right hand side is struggling a little bit. Two big machines, but they're not cutting a whole lot of wood. Well, it could have been because of that knot whirl we saw over there on stand two, but great cuts by both these athletes. Frankie, yesterday we watched all the hot saws and uh, things went right to pieces, but uh, today things pulled together well for you. Can you explain the difference? Uh, I think we, we used a little too much fuel yesterday to start it, flooded it out. So we uh, held back on the fuel today and it seemed to work quite well. Right on. Now we see in your second kite you went through a ring of knots. Does that slow those big babies down at all or does it? Uh, slightly. It's hard to notice when they're spinning so fast, but uh, I'd prefer there are no knots. <laughs> that was a good run. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, a good time there by Doug Armsworthy with a 12.57. The ring of knots probably slowed him down a little bit. He also had a little bit of a falter on the first way down the first cut there. This next heat, heat number three, Berlin Nickerson taking on Ben Cumberland. Time to beat. 12.57 set by Doug Armsworthy in the last heat. Yeah, both these athletes really been making a name for themselves in the hot saw the last couple of years. Here we go. Next heat of the hot saw. Whoa, Berlin with a cake instead of a cookie on his first cut, Bill. His second cut is incomplete. He's going to have to try and get a third He's got no more room on his six inches. Ben's trying to get three on the deck, and he's just struggling to get things finished. Hey, so Berlin, these saws are these saws are big and heavy. How, how heavy is that saw, and what kind of complications does that give you when you're running it? Yeah, so that saw runs about 60 pounds. Um, you know, <laughs> it's not like lifting up just your normal stock saw. You're you're lifting a, a lot of weight for most people, right? So, and then you take the uh, the gyro of the motor and the torque of that motor as well to control it all. It's it's a lot, yeah. yeah. So being a being a big burly lad like yourself it helps a lot doing that. It does. It's like ballast, right? You know, if uh, if somebody really skinny steps out in a windstorm, they blow away. So uh, yeah, the, the more weight you got, the, the easier all these events are, you know. Except for the agility events, of course. But uh, weight weight helps in this in this game. 
Well, a lot of slower times and a couple of DQs opened the door for Donald Lambert and Marcel Dupuis in the final heat of the hot saw. 12.57 is still the leading time by Doug Armsworthy over the years. Certainly these guys have taken that time down many times. Yeah, but they're both going to have to risk it to get the biscuit here in this final heat of the hot saw. Both these guys very fast. Wow, look at Marcel into the wood. Marcel's already on his third cut all within six inches. He wins the hot saw with a 5.86. So smooth. I mean, you watch the, the guys ahead of you. There wasn't a real fast cut ahead of you. So does that take some of the pressure off? It does, but sometimes when you try to do a safe cut, it's worse. So uh, you just got to go there and try to make three cuts to put on the deck. And, and that's what I did today and ended up working pretty well, I believe. Yeah, heartbreak city there for Donald Lambert, disqualifying in that final heat. Marcel Dupuis will take a full 100 points in the hot saw. And our crown pivotal points go to Scott Reed and Donald Lambert, both of them DQing in the hot saw, opening the door for a big victory for Marcel Dupuis, garnering 100 points. Meaning our Lumberjacks of the day are Marcel Dupuis with 600 points in the men's division and Caitlin Carroll with 385 in the women's. Okay, so Caitlin, with this many events uh, to come out over top two years in a row, tell me, uh, tell me the secret to your success. <laughs> um, really just showing up and hoping that everything comes together and luckily it did. Awesome, so this is a big year for you in more ways than one, right? Uh, yeah, next weekend we got some qualifiers going on and hoping that uh, I'll be able to do well there as well. So Marcel, uh, two years in a row, lots of uh, stiff competition here and lots of events. Tell us, uh, tell us about your success. Yeah, it was a, it was a great, great event. Uh, and and like you said the competition was uh, really, really hard today. Uh, I got beaten in a lot of events, like Nathan and Ben and, and Berlin. All these guys coming up uh, were super competitive and they were winning events everywhere. And I was just trying to sneak in and be consistent all day. And uh, at the end of the day, well, I, I got lucky and ended up having the overall. But it was just about consistency today for me. So. Well, congratulations. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow. Over 40 competitors here today, 20 different events. Talk about a lot of things to pull together, a lot of moving parts. Hats off to Berlin Nickerson, Ryan McIntyre, and Darren Hudson for making it all happen. Big hats off, too, to all the sponsors around the Barrington area for also pulling together and making this event a reality. Come back again next week when it'll be time for our Lumberjack. Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, only professional grade with five-year warranty. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Yamaha, rev your heart. always talk about the different grinds of axes and how they chop wood better than another, whether it's a chisel grind, super grind, or whatever. But it's actually that last millimeter of the axe that really determines how far it'll penetrate in any one chop. So just before an event, a competitor will grab one of their really fine stones, either an Arkansas stone or a ceramic stone, and you'll see them sitting there doing that very last millimeter, making sure it's as sharp as they can get it so they actually penetrate as much as it can in the chop.